a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Chiefs. They have five or six guns there, sitting bulls among them. A note next to one of these old breech loaders says that it belonged to the famous Chief Lame Deer, killed in a battle with General Miles, who generously donated this gun to the New York Museum. I don't know what right old bear coat Miles had to be that free with other people's property. That gun didn't belong to him. It belongs to me. I am the only lame deer left. I am a medicine man. And I want to talk about visions, spirits, and sacred things. But you must know something about the mad lame deer before you can understand the medicine man lame deer. So I will call, so I will start with the man, the boy, and we'll get to the medicine part later. Taka Ashte, the first lame deer, was my great-grandfather on my father's side. He was killed by mistake. You could say he was murdered. A year before this so-called battle with General Miles, lame deer had made his final peace with the white man. He had made an agreement with the U.S. government. By this treaty, they measured off four square miles west of what is now Rapid City, South Dakota. This was to be a reservation for the chief and his people, and it was to be called Lame Deer after him. This land was to be ours forever, as long as the sun shines and the grass grows. These days, smog is hiding the sun, and there's little, laugh, little grass left in Rapid City now. Maybe the white people had the gift of foreseeing this when they took our land before the ink on that treaty was dry. Lame Deer said that he would sign this treaty if he and his people could go out on one last hunt and live for one more summer in the good old way, going after the buffalo. After that, they would all settle down on their new reservation and walk the white man's road. The government people said that this was all right and gave him permission for his last hunt. They shook hands on it. The U.S. government is a strange monster with many heads. One head doesn't know what the others are up to. The army had given Lame Deer its word that he could hunt in peace. At the same time, it told old Bear Coat Miles that any Indians found hunting off the reservations were to be attacked as hostiles. 